I, I personally don't know how to mourn Ken because he was a good friend, he was a mentor, he was my senior. So I will just um, speak on behalf of uh, the Stare community, which held a memorial service for him yesterday. Uh, Ken spared no effort to help his friends. Ken sacrificed to lift up his friends. And some of his very passionate friends who he opened up to, who he walked his journey from Kibira days, um, are seated here, who went with him to school in Starehe. Ken alikuanga ni mtu alikuwa na maraundi muenda Kibira. Tukienda guada, tunenda kufanya fishing. He taught me how to fish. But eventually I realized those things were not fish. They were tadpoles. <laughs> but I believed him because Ken was an avid debater. So you could not debate with Ken that those were not fish, that they were tadpoles. Because he would defeat you. In fact, yesterday, Dagi said at Starehe, or was it Kanut, who said, if Ken was on your side, even if you knew you were wrong, you will get away with it. He joined Starehe in 1992. He was two years ahead of me in Olympic. At that time, I'd never heard of Starehe before. But the pressure that Ken brought in fact, ni mwana watoi wa ulimu hapa, ni kashukuru mungu, eh, serikali iliban viboko. Because when Ken made it to Starehe, eh, Olympic Primary School decided some of us must also go to Starehe. And they worked on us properly. <laughs> For those who have been to Olympic, you will know. Eh, Mrs. Omoyo, Namlundu, Nganga were not to be played with. When Ken joined Starehe, I guess the first thing he saw when he walked through the gates was the massive school motto inscribed at the gates, Natulengeju. And I believe from then on, Ken has never looked down. He determined to Lengaju in everything he did. He quickly weaved into the school life. He joined the band. So eventually when I joined Starehe, I also joined the band. He became an actor in the annual school musicals. When I joined Starehe, I became an actor. He became the chairman of the debate club. When I joined Starehe, I joined the debate club. He was in the voluntary service scheme, and Ken did four voluntary service scheme every holiday. He would work at Kenyatta National Hospital and such other places. Those ones I didn't do, but yeah, for other reasons. He became the chief editor of the school magazine. And so he started shaping the school's narrative from very early on. Sometimes I normally think Ken was a full-time leader and a part-time student at Stare. He had tenacity, and from very early on he had decided he will become a prefect. And he started in Stare, we call it campaigning. And he started campaigning very early. And because he would always trouble the school administration, including Griffin, at the school Baraza, with very difficult questions about the administration of the school, they decided to make him a prefect, the atelier. Ken carried lessons, and this is why the Starea community is proud of Ken. And we carry him as one of our own. Because in the school, we were taught five key tenets. And Ken exemplified those things that we were taught. The first one was the charge on the day we were leaving the school. Griffin charged us never to forget the great benefits we received at Strehe. And in time to come, according to our means, to do all that we could to enable others to enjoy the same advantage. And to remember to carry with us, wherever we went, the good name of Strehe the number of children Ken has enabled to go to school attest to him leaving to the church. The number of schools Ken has built in Kibra, the number of scholarships in Starehe alone as one person, he sponsors five children, which he paid for from his own pocket and some 
from CDF. The second one was the weight of government bear, where we pledged ourselves in the school song when our generation's turn came that we would bear the weight of government to all mankind through service to our nation, head, heart, and hand, and in justice, zeal, and care. And I'm sure we can all attest that Ken stood for these things. In Parliament, in his work with civil society, Ken pledged himself to bear the weight of government. The third one is what many of you here are quoting, that Griffin told us when we are given a coffee cup to clean, make sure it's the cleanest cup ever. Indeed, Ken was a man of detail to a fault. He did not entertain sloppiness. Everything had to be thorough. It is this stubbornness in him cleaning the coffee cup that sometimes made him come across as being arrogant, which is a trait with uh, many of us Starayans. The fourth one was the path of duty, which was inscribed as you walked into the assembly hall. The path of duty is the way to glory. He didn't care much for being popular or for being loved. Ken cared for his work ethic that would bring him glory in time to come. And in this last week, we can see that indeed Ken's work and work ethic has earned him the glory. Finally, we were taught to dare to dream dreams and be ready to pay the price. Ken believed this and believed that nothing was impossible. Ken would say, Casey Baadai, let's get the thing done. And that's the Ken we want to honor and we want to remember. Go well, my brother.